what's up everybody welcome back to our channel and unfortunately it's that time of year again it's time for these things like uh, just picked this one out came from work didn't have time to get out this morning and came home what can you do uh, but it has been raining a lot so a lot of our preventative uh, measures that we've taken have unfortunately been washed away right but fortunately I'm here for you you can learn from me learn from my mistakes or from all the stuff that we do so today what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk pest prevention and pest control um, can't do anything about them once they're already in there but pull them off and feed it to the chicken so let me throw this to the side what we're gonna talk about today is we're gonna use some neem oil now this this is this has become a favorite of mine because it's way cheaper than this neem oil you probably already got everything you need at your house right now uh not kombucha it's actually cooking oil um big ups to miss linda at the louisiana uh at the new orleans garden i'm about to say louisiana garden family that was back in the days huh? uh at the new orleans gardener um actually about two years ago i would say i was watching miss linda's channel and she makes this citrus oil and she actually uses it just like she uses the neem oil i think it was around fall because she was spraying these on all her greens um if you go over to her channel i would say ask her for the link she'll give you the link to how she makes this stuff i won't tell you like how long to leave it her video or do all of that i'll just tell you what it is it's basically um vegetable oil and any kind of citrus peels lemon peels orange peels you want to it's kind of like a scent masking type thing which is almost the same thing the neem oil does so it's still an oil base because you're using your cooking oil from inside clean cooking oil um, but she makes this stuff by the jars full and she'll show you how to do that so what we're going to do today is we're going to take both of these i don't like to just use one since i started making this for like almost free i like to mix it in with my neem oil so i'm kind of getting like a neem citrus mix I haven't seen any adverse effects to it, so I use it. If I would have seen like a problem from using it, then I would have like just stopped and went back to one or the other, but I haven't seen a problem with mixing it. So we got an old sprayer my brother gave me for free, which is good for this application. And if you want to measure, that's your deal. If you don't want to measure, then you're like me. You don't have time for all the reading on the back of the labels. So what I do is I just take some of this. You can get it close so they can make sure they see. I mean, just put what you think is enough. Over time, as you use this stuff, you'll kind of see whether you want to use more or less. I'm more so on the side of less is more with everything. Um, so take some of Miss Linda's citrus oil. That's at the New Orleans Gardener. I call it Miss T-Knob. Pour me some of that. I can pour a little bit more of that because not cheap like cooking oil is. And you can get your family to give you their little pills that's left over when they eat oranges. Little bit of soap, Bell's cucumber soap. You probably paid like 50 cents for this stuff. How much you pay for this? A dollar? Two dollars? Two cent. Two cent? <laughs> okay. Two cent. So I'm gonna put like I ain't gonna even, can't even put a penny worth up in there. Uh, you take that, and and what we're gonna show you is I actually went in it before, which is why I decided to do this video. I actually went in, and man, we've had a squash vine board that's taken out some of our squash, which I'm gonna show you, and I'm gonna show you the difference between the squash in here that we didn't treat at all, and the squash that we have outside our zucchini outside that we did treat um so basically i'm gonna put that on and that's one of the things we're going to use all right so before i go in there i'm going to get this other one and this is last time y'all saw me using a parmesan shaker this time i got this old garlic salt shaker so same thing take the top off get you some dye tomatoes herb make sure that bag is getting wet um this cost twenty dollars for how much is this does it even say yeah. like uh 
18 pounds. I thought it said like 40 it pounds. But I think it's the 40 pounds. It is 40 pounds, babe. Look. Yeah. So down Over here the... says 40 pounds. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's why she has the camera. I, I thought, I know it was 40 or 50 pounds. So $20 for 40 or 50 pounds of this stuff. It's going to easily, this stuff's going to last you a good three, four seasons. Right? I think I'm on my second season with it and it's still at half a bag. So I'm just basically up in here. You can go up in here. Let's show them. This is just dyed to make earth. This is how it looks. She's not gonna get too close. Uh, basically, I'm just scooping it up and putting it in there. This stuff has this stuff has actually made the difference to me, even more so than the neem oil. I think this stuff has made the difference because it's easier for me. I don't have to make it. I just scoop some out here and go put it on my plant. So let's walk on inside the high tunnel and I'll show you how we put all this stuff together. With the diatomaceous earth, I more so like to use it on our pepper plants, and I'll show you. These pepper plants are about, I'm gonna say two to three years old. And so they are old and they're gonna, they're getting, I guess more susceptible to disease. But if you look at this, any other time, I would put this diatomaceous earth on these. If I saw the little black ants crawling over in the apex, kind of like that's over here on these you can look at these it's filled with aphids uh these i will put diatomaceous earth on them normally today i'm just going to do all spray i'm not going to use any diatomaceous earth because i got this little white mole on these about two three days ago it was way worse than that so this is working so i'm going to give it another application this is going to be our second application in like a week uh, it looks like it's working because this stuff was all over. Now it's not so bad. And I'm seeing some new growth over here, if you can look. Uh, so that's telling me that the plant is recovering from that first application that we put on it. So now I'm going to give it one more and hopefully it's going to knock the rest of all this little white mold, whatever it is. I didn't even look it up. I was like, uh, I can handle it. So basically, we're just taking this and really soaking, saturating the plant. I'm gonna do this one and then I'll stop and we'll go look at something else before we go to our raised beds. You always can get in a little closer, Miss Babs. It is close. You can My phone. so good. My opponent right. looked closer. So, and that's basically what we do. Actually, I can just sit out here. We're in the high tunnel, so it's not hot. We actually got this 45% shade cloth over us. So it really is a little bit cooler in here than it is outside. Now this stuff is like, it's just falling off. Before it was, it was sticking to the plant. Now I'm seeing it. I really got in the head of it. So I'm happy about that. I didn't know what the problem was. Like I said, I didn't research it. I'm sure it's some kind of mold, some kind of pest, some kind of disease. But this citrus and neem oil spray has, to me, has done the trick. So I'm going to show you one thing I am. Or I'm kind of glad, kind of not glad. Uh, we actually have planted in some more beans since we saw the space. And I tell you all the time, if stuff don't work for you, plant something else you see these were the first beans that we planted and they did horrible so what we did was about a week ago we just put more bush beans in and now it's looking more filled in and better um if you come over here we didn't use this stuff we didn't use this diatomaceous earth and i'm going to show you come on come on in here and look at this look at the problem we didn't have I think the vine borer got us, went in there and did his damage. What we usually would do, and I'm just gonna show you here, what I was supposed to do was I was supposed to take this stuff and keep this right on this vine to keep anything from going in there. And if you go right here, right next door, look at that, something went in there and got us. This was because, and look how beautiful they was growing. 
because I was too lazy to come out. Not lazy. I kind of wanted to see, really, because I was having so much success in the raised beds. I kind of wanted to see, is the vine bar, like, is it bad this year? Or is this one of the years where you just won't see it? Um, so, I'm guessing I do need to put the diatomaceous earth because they got to that one. So, this one I'm going to come over. This one they haven't got to yet, I don't think. So, I'm just going to go ahead on it. And this is all I do. You really want to coat around that stem where it's coming out the ground. We're going to walk up here. We're going to put it on. Oh, we got another one here too. I kind of keep these things separated. That way you can see how those two are right by each other. So it kind of got to it. So by having it separate, it kind of gives you a chance to, if you get a, a bug or a pest or an infestation that you got, you got time to come in. I look how beautiful that one is. Look how beautiful that stem is. That's beautiful, dark green all the way down. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take that diatomaceous earth and I'm gonna just coat that, coat that stem. Never did it. This one seemed to do well. This one made it. Um, those two over there didn't have that real good luck. Uh, so we got some zucchini that's right here that we actually are going to put some Dots Earth on. Everything else we're going to spray. Everything else we're going to spray. Because so this one, one if you go around there, got some pruning to do on the leaves, but look how nice. Don't want nothing to get. I can see right there. It look like it's getting a little old looking. Just going to take that diatomaceous earth and just go down that stem. That's where that borer wants to go. So all you want to do is go down that stem. Not seeing. You can also see we're not seeing a lot of uh, good pollination in the high tunnel on these zucchini. We have had about four of them, I would say. But you can see most of them are not getting pollinated as well probably can do some hand pollination but not gonna do it uh, same thing in here i'm gonna go in here hopefully they haven't got to this one yet this one is looking a little bit yellow looking so i'm gonna go in there and do that so basically that's how we've been keeping keeping ahead on on keeping this stuff alive basically from getting eight out. I know it's the time of the year. You can come over here and look at this is the time of the year. Look at this horn one. I got two of them. Look at that. These things are it is folks. Amazingly huge. Look it's eating too. And this one is just it's eating. You get a small one over there, a small one over here. Yeah. So what we're gonna have to do is get in and actually, actually just get those. I'm gonna take them off and give them to the chickens. But before they get over here, we're gonna get these nice babies. That I haven't been doing much. Uh, you can take it. I haven't been doing much like I told y'all last year. We wasn't gonna do much with the indeterminate tomatoes. I just put them in here, but I'm not taking time to do much as far as maintenance on them. They could look a whole lot better, but I just decided it's worth the time. I'm not going to say it's not worth the time, but I just decided that, I don't know, it's too much work for us. Uh, so to have a few of them for the taste of the heirloom uh, varieties is perfect, but for production, we kind of just went with putting in more indeterminate type tomatoes. Uh, so we're going to take a pause and I'm going to take you up by the raised bed to show you those uh, zucchini and squash that we have kept the maintenance up on and you'll see that the vine borer hasn't really got us. So let's go check that out right quick and that'll be it for the video. So if you look in here at our zucchini these have done well. We've done pruning on them. Uh, but you can see that vine 
it comes from here but you see all this old white stuff we've actually done really well with keeping the diatomaceous earth just on the stem that's you don't have to put it all over the whole plant you only worried about with your squash and zucchini you only worried about just that stem let's come over here to some more and you can see how the rain is kind of getting to us and this one is looking like they've probably got to that one but you can see right here the one that's that's white no problem this one with the rain and us exposing it, cutting off all the leaves, I think we exposed the stem. Next time I'll probably try to keep more uh, leaves around the stem. Uh, but looks like this one maybe, I'm not sure, they've gotten to. But the rest of them you can see over here, no problem so far. So what I'm gonna do, just a preventative measure. Just go ahead on and get your stem back coated. Like I say, $20, you get 40 pounds of this stuff. So, then we got these from Tractor Supply. Go ahead on and get your stem back coated as long as that vine grows. It's just a vining plant, and that vine's gonna grow, 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 grow. So, you wanna make sure as long as the vine is, you have your diatomaceous earth done. And basically, all of our success this year Besides God just keeping this stuff alive, uh, most of our success has come from uh, having this diatomaceous earth in the garden, being able to utilize it, uh, being a little cheap where we can actually get it. It's organic. Um, it has the OMRI seal on it and all that, the good seal of approval for organic gardening. Um, you can feed it to your animals as well, to your chickens. Um, that citrus oil that Miss Linda makes, it's also, I mean, it's edible. If you fry food, it's nothing but orange peels and oil that you cook with. Uh, so even if you don't want to get the neem oil because you don't know what's in the neem oil, I'm sure you can get that cooking oil, find some organic cooking oil, I don't know, whatever you want to use, and just add those citrus peels to it, let it sit. So um, that's what we do. That's all we do. That's all of our pest protection besides us being about to go back there and pull those hornworms off. Other than that, we do anything else? That's it. <laughs> I think that's it. So now you know everything we do. You can do what we do, and you can add your own flair to it and do some of the stuff you do. Um, it's cool. Uh, we got more. Look at our tomatoes we got today. And we just put out a video, right, about pruning your tomatoes. Pruning your tomatoes. And I tell you, if you don't come out and sometimes take them off, it don't matter how much stuff you spray on them, you still gonna have to come in here with your hands and pick and get you some pliers and pick these things. Cause you don't wanna grow a garden where you supposed to get all of this stuff and they eat it all. Can't stand those suckers that do that, right? Uh, so thank y'all for watching the Grow Family Network. Time to get some tomatoes. And time for us to go get some tomato hornworms. <laughs> Thank y'all for watching the Grow Family Network. And as always, grow, grow, grow.